Today we're learning about PHP include and require statements. They will make your code more efficient and easy to manage. Hello and welcome. My name is Dave. I'm a full-time developer and university web development instructor. My goal is to help you learn how to build the web. If you'd like to see more of that, click the subscribe button you see right over there. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is start Jamps control panel and then start the Apache server as we need a local dev server for PHP. It is a server side language. If you don't have Jamp installed, I have a tutorial for that and I will link to it below in the description. Once we've started the Apache web server, we can minimize that and begin the tutorial. Notice in the file tree, I already have an index.php file and I've added a little bit of CSS, which we won't get into. But let's look at the structure of this index.php file. And I'm going to hide the file tree by pressing Control B in Visual Studio Code. I'm on Windows, it may be different on Mac or Linux. Okay, looking at the structure of this index.php, right now it is really just an HTML file. I haven't added any PHP, but notice the structure. We have a header, a main element, and a footer, all semantic elements. The header has an H1 heading in it, and the main and footer both have H2 for uh, subheaders. Now let's look at the page and how it renders over here in the browser. We can see the page header, then the main content for the page, and the page footer at the bottom. Now these are things that we would not want to have to manually add to every page, and that's where PHP include and require can be very handy. So instead of just this header, we could possibly create an include file that would include this in every PHP file we generate, and therefore when we need to make changes, we would just have to change one file. So let's bring the file tree back over, and let's create a folder, and let's name this folder view. If you were to follow the model view controller design pattern, which I'll cover in a future tutorial, we would have view files, and the index.php file is more of a controller for what will be viewed, and it can pull different views from this folder. So let's go ahead and add a header.php file to this view. Now it doesn't have to have PHP. We can just take our header and I'll remove it from this index.php and I will paste the contents right into the header.php file. I'll save that and now back in our main index.php I will type PHP and then include and now I'll need to specify where to find that header file. And it is in the view, so I'll put dot slash view. We're going down into a folder. If it was up a folder, I would put two dots to go up a folder or a directory. The folder and directory could be used interchangeably at this point. So going up is two dots. This is like navigating on the command line also, by the way. But just to say I'm in this folder is one dot and now look into a new folder. So I'm going to look into the view folder and then I'll look for, not index, but header.php. Now once we've typed that and we're finished, we can end the PHP line. And we're telling our index.php to find that header file and include it. Now let's go ahead and refresh. Let's go ahead and comment out the include. I'll press Control, I'm sorry, Shift, Alt, and A to comment that out all at once. Again, in Visual Studio Code, Shift, Alt, and A. Now I'll save that, and let's refresh the page. No header at all. So we have not included that at that point. Now notice, uh, there's no error or anything either. Now I'll go ahead and remove these comments. We just did that by commenting it out. But let's say we put in uh, some, some poor directions that we couldn't find the file, or we forgot that it was in the view folder, so we just told it to include the header.php. Now let's see what we get on the page. We get a warning. It failed to open or find that file. It's not a fatal error though. The rest of the page went ahead and executed. We got a warning. Now the difference in using require, the only real difference uh, that we would notice 
is that require will not let the PHP script continue to function if there is an error. So now if I refresh the page and it can't find it, we get a warning to start, but then we get a fatal error. And notice we didn't get anything else on the page. It, in, it failed completely. So if we use include, and for some reason the included file is not found, we get a warning, but the rest continues to work. Let's go ahead and create a footer file as well in our view folder. And now in that footer file, we can remove the footer from the index.php and we can put it right in the footer file. And now we can include that back in the ph index.php file as well. And I'll do that in the same manner. And remember, it's actually in the view. I was getting an error on purpose. So we need to adjust this as well. And then we'll say header and footer, it looks good. Okay, let's refresh the page. And we're back to where we started, except we have used includes for the header and footer. Now imagine if we had a menus, say a navigation menu for contact us and different things that you find in the footer normally. And one of those links needed to change. If our site had 100 pages and we weren't using an include, we would have to change a lot of files. The include certainly helps in that regard. But there's other ways it can help too because we can conditionally include files in PHP and make decisions like that. And what I'm going to do now is create an alt header instead of the header that we're currently using. So I'm going to change this view request and it's going to request an alt header. But what I'll do in addition to that is create a couple of other files. So let's start with the alt header and we'll now request alt underscore header PHP. So we need to create that file and that will still be in the view. So here's alt header.php. And now in this alt header, we're going to start out with the header element. And then we'll define a variable we need to actually put PHP first before we define the variable. And let's go ahead and close that out as well. Now let's define our variable name and let's set it equal to filter input. And we'll get a get variable and it will be first name. Let me go ahead and maximize this just so you can see everything. And after first name, we're going to filter sanitize for a string. There we go. And now we're going to check this and conditionally pull in a couple of other files. So we'll say if not empty, then we're looking at name. So if the name is not empty or the name variable is not empty, then we're going to include. And here I'm going to say well, let's talk about this for a second. When we include now, we have to think about the navigation. Where are we going to include from? Uh, so let me stop right here before I do the include. And we'll look at what I'm going to include, I guess. And that means in the view menu, I'm going to actually add another folder. And here I'm going to call this folder greetings. In the greetings folder, we're going to create a couple of files. We'll have a user greeting and we'll have a visitor greeting. Now the user greeting is going to have a personalized greeting and give some menu options while the visitor greeting will basically just say hello visitor. So let's go back to our alt header and we'll add some of this code that pulls in each file. So if the name variable is not empty, we can give a personalized greeting to the user. So we'll say include, and now this is where we really need to think about the path of the include file. In this example, the header will still have loaded or the alt header is being pulled in from the view folder and you would think we could just go down into greetings and grab these files, but that's not the case because we have to remember the alt header 
is being pulled into the index. So we have to think about everything relative to where the index file is. So we have to go into the view folder, then into the greeting folder. So this would be dot slash view slash greetings slash user greeting dot php. And that takes a little bit to wrap your head around because we're thinking we're creating this in the alt header. And so from the alt header, we just have to go into greeting to find the file. But we have to remember the alt header itself is being pulled into the index where it's rendered. And we, so we have to think about navigating from where this is rendered. And that would be index into the view, into the greeting, to the file we want. Now we can also say else, and then the else will be very similar to this, except it's going to be, well, I don't want to copy that one. It's going to be the visitor greeting. And we can save that, and now we need to create the user and visitor greetings. And I'm just going to paste some of that in to save a little bit of time we can go over what it contains. So the user greeting will just have our H1 heading and it will say hello and then whatever name we come in here like hello Dave and then it will echo that greeting so it's a personalized greeting and then it's going to go ahead and include a nav menu. Maybe there's some items that our users have access to after they've registered. And then in the visitor greeting we're going to keep it really simple just for this example. And we'll paste that in as well. And it's just going to say, hello visitor, and then echo that greeting. So let's save both of those files. Now that we've made those changes, let's go ahead and resize the window once again so we can see how the page renders. And let's refresh the page to see what we get. We get hello visitor. We didn't pass any parameter, the get parameter that it's looking for is the first name. So it has hello visitor, so it did complete what we expected it to in the alt header. And here I'll get rid of the file tree once again. So since name was empty, we got the visitor greeting. Let's go ahead and pass the parameter in now. And we'll say first name, and we'll put Dave in. Now I got hello Dave and I've got menu item one, two, and three. Now it looks like I forgot to set the display and the CSS to inline block. So I will just jump up here and do that right away. We could get the list item and we could say display equals inline block and that should change that list. Let's refresh. There it is. Just took a second to get the correct file in there. I think sometimes if it doesn't, if the server's holding onto the file, you want to hold down shift when you hit reload so it doesn't go for a cache. And sometimes the server will cache your files. So that is good to know if you're getting frustrated with something. So there we've got our personalized greeting and our menu items. So let's follow that path. The name was not empty, so it included the user greeting. Now if I look in the files and I choose user greeting, you can see we have the personalized greeting and the menu items. Now let's go back to the index.php file where we start the original includes and we're including the alt header. There is something important to note here. You may hear about include once and require once. Let's look at this if we just copy this and include the header twice. I'll save the file and refresh. And now we've got the header twice and the menu items twice. It went ahead and included everything twice. Now include once is a very similar uh, command to include, except it checks to see if the header has been included. And if it has, it won't include it again. However, if it's included somewhere that just has include instead of include once, it probably will include it again. As you notice, I refreshed and we still have got two headers even though I used include once. It doesn't override the include. Now if I make both of these include once and save, then we should only get it once. And that would be the same with require once. Now this isn't nearly as efficient because 
it has to check the file, check the page, to see if it's been included. So include is much more efficient than include once. Likewise, require is much more efficient than require once. So the best thing you can do is just use include and require and keep your code organized so you don't mistakenly have the same file included twice. However, in a large project, that could be a problem or an enterprise project. And of course, that's why these were created in the first place, so that their existence does make sense. But if you can help it, just use include and require instead of include once and require once. When you start building projects in PHP, include and require statements can be very useful. If you have questions or comments about this video, please leave them below. There's much more to learn. And in the meantime, a couple of videos on my left may help you on your coding journey. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing, and I'll see you next time.